on the phone with me right now, the gambler. Hi, Daryl. Ron, what's happening, bud? Daryl, I'm wearing your shirt. All right. That's a cool thing right there, man. That's, that's good karma. If you can't wear the gambler shirt in Las Vegas, where are you going to wear it? Well, you know, that's a good point right there. <laughs> Uh, is it bringing you any luck? Well, the funny thing is, and I'm not I'm not a hypocrite, so I'm just going to tell the truth. I, I don't gamble, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's a good thing. That's I, a good thing, I'm, I'm sure. I play some horses when my brother was picking them because he's so good at handicapping ponies. Right. So we do that. But... So, 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 Daryl, I loved your text a couple nights ago when I was in Las Vegas. You sent me a text from Joe Bonamassa's show. Where were you at? Well, I, I was backstage with Joe and uh, an old friend of yours, Rick Gold. And yeah, Rick Huey Gould. And, and uh, Joe himself and his, his wife, Sandy Tom, and mm -hmm. just, you know, everybody, we were just back there kicking it and talking about old rock and roll times. We were talking about Lawn Friend and... <laughs> We're talking about the Golden Bear and just had really good conversation with a lot of people. I didn't know who everybody in the room was. Right. You know, Lon, you and I go way back with rock and roll. We've probably seen a lot of people between the two of us. Yeah. And I remember a day when you would go backstage to see somebody. Right. And it would just be rampant with rock stars with big hair everywhere and nasty drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And I got to tell you, it was really, really cool to go back there and literally just sit and have good quality conversation yep. with nobody drunk and no drugs. Yep. It was cool, man. I don't know how to tell you. But the, the, the debauched distractions have waned yeah. over the last couple of decades. It's true. You're it's a good observation, Daryl, really. And and it's for it's for the better, man. Everybody had a clear head. Yeah. Yeah. And uh you know, it it was just really cool. And I, I got to tell you, you know, um Joe's becoming a personal friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this guy play a few times. And I don't want to step out of the gate by saying this, but I'm going to say it. When I was sitting there listening to him play that guitar, mm -hmm. it was kind of uh, angelic, man. Yeah. No, I'm serious. I, I've seen everybody, Lon, and I'm just not talking this guy up because I know him. I know. He's he's great. He's got a gift. He does. I I mean, I, I, I had to text him right after the show and say, Joe, man, he, he, you are the world's gift because I've heard everybody, Lon, and, and man... Time after time after time, the guy is just perfection. Yeah. You that's, know, that's, a, that's an enthusiastic review, Daryl. I like that. Well, it's just flat out the truth. And the way he opened up his gig is he came out and he did a uh, an acoustic set with some pretty bizarre instruments, you know, a banjo. And, mm -hmm. and he had uh, Lenny Caster up there on percussion. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew who Lenny is. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had some really cool guys behind him, and he did kind of like a a funky acoustic bluegrass rock funk. Yep. Thing. I don't even know what to call it. I really <laughs> don't. But it was mesmerizing. Oh, again. Awesome. You know, and, and he played a different guitar through that whole set, and then he comes out like some rock and roll star. Mm -hmm. Just screaming. <laughs> the opposite of what he just did. <laughs> so what you got to see was that versatility, man. Yeah. Like I've never seen a guitar player do before. Yeah. I heard Flamingo picking in there. I heard mm -hmm. Lon. It was insane. That's all I can tell you. You know what, man? When we get to be, you know, when we're in our 50s and we still have the, the, the teenage hearts of rock and roll, it's those kind of gigs that bring us back and make us like thankful that we love music so much. Yeah. That's yeah. those are the kind of gigs where you where you go home vibrating, ears ringing and body vibrating. Uh, the, I those that's the 70s to me, man. That's that's was for me that was the 70s. Yeah, and and you know, to be vibrating 3 days later like really long. <laughs> I, I couldn't wait to do this interview with you because <laughs> I think more people need to know about this guy. 
This guy, you're going to hear about him for a long time. Now, you know he started playing when he was it, – it's seven years old he can mimic Jimmy Hendrix. You know that, right? Yeah, he's a prodigy, I know. Yeah. I, I Prodigy? I, I think he's above a prodigy. What What would you <laughs> call that? An alien? Honest to God. An alien, man. We question where some of these great artists come from. Maybe not here, right? Oh. And, and, and you know, when, when you go backstage with him, he's just a very humble, quiet, mm-hmm. lets everybody else speak and let, lets everybody else talk about their things yeah. and everything, doesn't overrule. He, he knows what's happening, man. Yeah. What's funny, Daryl? Daryl, what's so funny is is it is because of your Storage Wars fame, you have so many rock stars that know who you are. Yeah, and which makes you kind of a rock star because you know you and I went to San Francisco together and saw Metallica, and you signed more autographs than some of the most most of the artists that were hanging around in the dressing room back uh, backstage. Yeah, that was insane, man. And and the thing about you is, and maybe maybe that's parallel to Joe Bonamassa is. You're maintaining your humility through all this. Well, you don't have to be an asshole and be famous. No. You don't. No, man. There's no point in being an asshole. Everything that's come my way has been a blessing. Yeah. And all these friends, as yourself, that I've met through this ride and this journey, yeah. have been nothing but a blessing. For so to try to be anything else but who you are yeah. would be the biggest mistake in the world. There it is. That's wisdom, you know? man. Yeah, that's true wisdom. The, that wisdom comes wh- whether you're a TV star, a rock star, or no star at all. You're just a you're grunt doing your thing, raising your family, going to school, whatever you're doing. That's the mantra. That's how you should live your life. Be your fucking self. And and that's that's all I want to be, man. I, I I'm really looking for that that inter mm-hmm. happiness thing to where I get to ride the rest of this ride just happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just... And you know what I mean. I know, man. I know. And you, um, yeah. a, lot of people, a lot of people need to find that. I wish I could give everybody I know 15 minutes of that. Yeah, man. Because I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more people are dying around me. <laughs> and... Well, absolutely. I mean, every day, like, two, uh, I knew two people yesterday, and I, I mean, not, not so deeply, not friends... But I'm talking about a friend of mine, Carrie Simon, who's a chef in Vegas who's got real sick out of nowhere. He gets this form of Parkinson's. What the fuck? So, yeah. yeah. So well, we, we, yeah. we know those illnesses just come up out of nowhere. And, yeah. and that's why it just every day is a blessing. I know you recently lost your mother. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank that's you. a big eye opener, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's a game changer. Oh. You know, I'm processing it now. Yeah, and and no, yeah, this is this is funny. I talked to Steven Tyler a couple of days ago. I had to get a quote from him for a, a book, a holistic book I've been working on with this doctor in New York, Doctor Francis. So he was he gave me like 15 minutes of just great stuff about going through his knee operation and how he's recovering. But the first thing he asked me is, "Hey, man, tell me." How you doing? Because I know I lost my dad and my mom, and it, it's something that you're going to process for the next five years on and off. And he was re- he, he just gave me a lot of insight into the patience you need to, because every day, look, Daryl, I'm driving her car. Her car right. smells like her. So it's right. like there's no escaping the aura and the memory. But what I do is every day I just kind of like, try to move into the light because I, I spend a lot of time in the shadows. Right. I guess as a writer, I got to be there, but I, I kind of like would like to burn a little brighter this, this coming year. Well, and you know what, what Steven was trying to do for you, Lon, is to tell you there's no quick way out of it Yeah, and just process it and find the happiness of that ride. Yeah. And, and just, Go with the good parts of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it'll be an easier ride. And that's what Steve was trying to tell you because he'd been there, done that. Yep. He was a brother, man. Yeah, no, he is. He's I love I love the guy. And <clears throat> he's he's a he's a classic. And 
that's all I could say is a lot of people are they're shrouded by their celebrity and you don't really know who they are except you, oh I say that's the guy in American Idol or that's the lead singer of Aerosmith. Well, you know, there's a guy, there's a human in there who's way deeper and way fra- more fragile than any of you think he might be. Oh yeah. Oh no, no. I, I you know, I spent last New Year's Eve with the guy and uh Yeah, you were in Hawaii, right? Yeah, we You had fun. Oh, I was sitting there with Steve and Weird Al Yankovic and Alice <laughs> Cooper. And by the way, Alice, if you're listening, you still owe me a game of golf. <laughs> but uh, great kick. Now, you were at Alice Cooper not long ago, right? Yeah, I saw a uh, day before Thanksgiving. I was in yeah. Las Vegas then, too. I've been there a couple times this month. And we didn't have time to play, but I saw the last show of his, of this tour, and it was kick. You know, I, I was with Orianthe afterwards, another smoking guitar player and it was alice is just great these guys they're they they defy mortality by getting on that stage in their 60 getting close to 70 some of these rockers and they defy mortality by getting up and you know Lon, that's exactly the point that i want to make about stuff really quick you just said oriante she's a hell of a guitar player yeah and she is one of the best chick guitar players i've ever seen yeah and that's the point i was trying to make i've seen i sat three feet away from her Mm -hmm. i mean for three hours new year's eve right in front of me watching her fingers go yeah i want to sound redundant but that's you know when bottom masa gets up there it's a whole nother entirely different thing man that is your mind just goes i know and that to me is pure raw yeah. god given talent. Yeah. Well, you know, he made a record with with Beth Hart, who is my daughter and my favorite she, favorite crooner of all yeah. the women out there. And she's such a survivor. She survived the same Hep C that Steven Tyler survived. She's a fucking warrior, and she played for the president last year. And she did, made this record, and I think they're nominated for a Grammy. Her and Joe for this oh, yeah. album, yeah. So good things are good things are coming to good people, right? right. Yeah. It's hard man. Uh, Star yeah. Search with uh, Sam Harris, right? Yeah. Ed McMahon show. Watched every bit of it. I remember. Ed McMahon. <laughs> Ed McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you, I, I, that's right. I just pulled that out, didn't I, Lon? It's good. So, yeah. do you know the name Al Goldstein? Of course. Screw Magazine? Of course. There was be, there would not be a hustler without Screw Magazine. Al Goldstein went back goes back to the beginning with Larry Flint and he just he just passed away today. Oh wow. Yeah. Wow. Today or yesterday. I know. And Tom Laughlin, Billy Jack, remember that film? That film was that was a game that was a game changer. He just passed he just passed away. Remember the song from Billy Jack? All we are saying is give peace a chance, <laughs> right? There's a hippie movie, man. It was like, it, it was a, it was a rise up, speak out, be a be an individual. That film was made for like a hundred thousand dollars, and it, it made millions. I know. Uh, Billy Jack, man, that was a you know I actually thoroughly enjoyed that movie watching him yeah. put his foot up the side of a few people's heads. <laughs> Yeah, man, that was a great film. And Peter O'Toole, see, I bet he's eighty-one. But here's what I remember about Peter O'Toole: and I, very few people had an uncut, X-rated version of Caligula, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and Caligula is so twisted, and yet Malcolm McDowell and Peter O'Toole are in it, are in the film. <laughs> wow! And Helen Mirren. There's three Oscar actors in that porn. It, it was the highest budget porn ever made. Incredible. I know. Bob Guccione. Crazy, huh? Oh, Bob Guccione. Is, yeah, uh, yeah. Guccione was with Pinhouse, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Look at the, the mind is clear in thinking, Lon. Oh, well. Thanks, nope. Daryl. My, my brain is like one of your storage compartments that, that needs to be cleaned out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've had some big changes in uh, the last four months of my life. Yeah. About some people dying and a lot of people yeah. have died uh, around us. So right. right. I'm sitting out there eating nachos with extra cheese and Kimber picks up the phone and dials it and she says, talk to this guy. Right. 
she throws the phone in my face, and it's a, a personal trainer. Right. And the guy gets in my face and says, you're getting your butt down to the gym. It's uh, mm-hmm. Mike from Geo Training. Mm-hmm. And he trains all the porn stars, Jesse James, mm-hmm. and all of them. So I started going to the gym, not for the girls, but for the workout. <laughs> and, uh, I'm losing weight. I'm eating clean now. And uh, You're losing your, your, your belly, your, cl- your classic trademark belly? I'm heading to 2.30 right now. Whoa. 303. Wow. Yeah. That's inspiring, man. Hey, I work out two hours every night except Sunday. And uh, I didn't think in my age of 50, your arms could still pump up and yeah. still be, you know. They can. Uh, oh, man, it's incredible. Well, Kimber wants you around for a while. Yeah. You just and, can't and You can't was, eat that shit. You just can't. Yeah, I know. I know, but it was fun while it lasted. Hey, I spent a... A holiday at your house once. You you like to cook and you like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> and I tried to get a hold of you for this Thanksgiving. I don't know if you saw that email or that text or not. I think uh, we're out in Vegas. Yeah, I was in Las Vegas with my brother and my dad. Yeah, we ate good. We he got a honey baked ham. My brother here's Hanukkah. This is Hanukkah. Honey baked ham. Light the menorah. That's what Thanksgiving and Hanukkah were. <laughs> That's some funny stuff. Man. We love everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. But, awesome. Uh, anything from Big Stu? Have you talked or seen Big Stu? Yeah, I have lunch still. We do our, like, twice a month lunch. He's the best. He just had his birthday. He just had a birthday, Big Stu. He did the the Cambridge boy, born in, born in England. For, 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 for everybody out there listening who doesn't know who Big Stu is, he's the Remax Realtor King of Orange County. He is indeed, and he was the first the first sponsor of this podcast, which is in its 37th week now. We thought it would last two weeks. Big Stu was very supportive in the beginning. and Sweet. We love him. Sweet. That's right. And that's how I met you, Big Stu, that's John right. Greenberg, Big Stu. Yeah, he's a connector. Yeah, I, I still am, I'm in uh, touch with John Greenberg all the time, and we've still got some things we're going to be doing in the future. And That's good, man. Yeah, it, well, I can't complain. No. Hey, I wish you nothing but the, but love and a great holiday, and thanks for calling in. Your Bonamassa review was top-notch, very passionate, like a fan. Well, listen. Yeah. If anybody gets a chance, a guy goes back on tour in two months, I know that. Right on. Go see this guy. Well, I'm going to go see him. Well, you let me know, and I'll go with you. Okay. That's a deal. In 2014, hey, you got it. Yeah, you and Mike have a great holiday. Thanks, man. Brother, and thanks for staying in touch with me the way you do. Right on, Daryl. Take care, buddy. I'm going to play some Bonamassa right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Energize.